Hello, everyone. Bonjour à tous. Uh, thank you for joining us today. My name is Andrea, and I am a digital learning associate at eCampus Ontario. In this next session, uh, we will be welcoming Louise Bezeja. He is a senior manager at Passive House Canada. Louise, the floor is yours now. Thank you very much for the introduction, Andrea. I just want to make sure that I have the correct screen, if you could confirm. It looks Perfect. good to me. Thank you. OK, so let me just get this one. All right, so best of all, before I get started with my presentation, um, I want to thank you for the opportunity to be here and uh, do Passive House Canada's acknowledgements for the ancestral and unceded territory for all the Metis, Inuit and First Nations uh, people that call this land home. I myself, I'd like to acknowledge that I live, work and play within the territories of the Lekwungen people represented by the Songhees and Squamish nations and the Wisenich people represented by the Starleap, Bonquachin, Say Out, Sinkum and Malahat nations. The first peoples have been here since time in memorial and their history in this area is long and rich. So as Indra said, my name is uh, Luis Becerra. I'm a senior manager with Passive House Canada. I'd like to bring it to your attention that uh, here's my email. We don't know if uh, we're gonna have too many questions or not as many questions, but if we do have a lot of questions and at the end and we can reply it, Within the time that we separated for this presentation, you can email me right there. So as my background, I'm a civil engineer, I'm a certified passive house designer, and uh, probably the project manager for the first certified passive house design in uh, South America, in my hometown, Natal, in Brazil. So yes, I'm Brazilian, living here in beautiful British Colombia, calling this place home. So for today's agenda, um, as we don't have a lot of time and uh, it's not a lot uh, that I can cover, within the uh, standard. We will do a short presentation on how we see uh, micro-credentials and one of the works that we've done so far that is a case of success that I can share with you. So first of all, I just wanna give you a brief introduction. Why does Passive House can exist? Uh, we exist to make zero uh, emissions buildings known and adopted by government, industry, and the public to support government and industry in the transition to high performance building through education, certification and policy development, and to make our planet a better place for us in future generation. How do we do our work? We advocate for the Passive House uh, Institute building standard, globally recognized as the best building standard for high performance buildings. For those of you who don't know, the Passive House Institute standard, it's uh, a German standard that has been adopted here in Canada and many provinces right now. We do have uh, Step 5 here in BC and we have the TGS4 in Toronto that actually refers back to Passive House. We advocate for construction best practices and the best choices for carbon neutral materials and we advocate for better buildings where people would have year-round health indoor air quality and temperature quiet and comfortable throughout changing seasons, substantial reduction in energy use and operation, operational costs, simple to use, durable system and priceless peace of mind. And who's Passive House Canada? So we're a membership-based uh, social enterprise as we do a lot of advocacy as I presented before. We do a lot of education and professional development. We have technical services as well, and uh, our members and staff and instructors are located all across the Canada. At Passive House Canada, we, we do have this saying that education is the passport for the future, for tomorrow belongings to those who prepare for today. So now talking about a little bit of the micro-credentials, how is the micro-credentials that we've been working towards uh, here already in Canada? So we have the high, uh, micro credentials that we've done before is for high performance uh, passive house designer and consultant. So this credential right now, I would, uh, um, it's focused on architects, engineers, architects, technicians, for those who are gonna be working directly with the, um, um, with the project itself in the design phase. So how does it work? 
So you base you basically go to uh, three courses that we call them the passive house design and construction, the 120A. I'm going to be speaking a little bit about the, uh, the the courses itself. We the second step would be uh, understanding and working with the passive house planning package, the PHPP. For those who don't know, the PHPP it's a software, um, it's a, an Excel sheet that uh, we do uh, all the modeling for passive house before they start the construction to make sure that all the metrics are being um, respected and you'll actually achieve uh, the passive house standard. The third one would be the online preparation for passive house design and consultant exam. So this is the exam prep where people get ready for the exam. And then they once they are done with the three steps, you have the exam and this exam is international. OK, so you get ready to take it on the PHI exam. And then once you pass, you, you have the international certification with PHI. So just going a little bit into the details of the Passive House Design and Construction, the 120A. This course now has been delivered in person. So we're back to in person and it can also be delivered online. How does it, uh, how is the, the course is structured? So right now we have 32 hours of courses. Online, what we've been doing is eight meetings, four hours per meeting. And uh, the online one, it's uh, live, okay? So we don't do the recorded ones. We believe that the uh, in-person interaction would be, let's say, the best way for you to learn. So I'm gonna not going to be reading for you guys there. So you have a description for the course. And you can also visit our website to check it a little bit more. But from what I can tell you is uh, the day one, we do go through the Passive House Principles. Day two, we talk about air tightness. Day three, thermal bridge. Day four, windows. Day five, ventilation. Day six, we go through heat, cooling, and domestic hot water. Day seven, we talk about economics. And day eight, we talk about quality, quality assurance and design tools and certification. So um, for the, um, the 120B, this one I'll take just a little bit longer just for you to understand what is the PHVP. So the PHVP, as I mentioned before, it's an Excel sheet, very powerful one, where you do all the inputs. So this course, it also can be delivered in person or online. Right now online, what we do is we do six meetings of four hours per meeting. So this course is more of a hands-on. So for you to take this course, we'd highly recommend you to take the 128 due to the fact that you're gonna have a lot of passive house principles and as I mentioned, this is a hands-on component that you're gonna be starting to model a passive house from the beginning to the end. So you go through plans and you just, uh, you have your instructors doing with you throughout the whole process. But I like to say that this course is gonna be focused for people who are actually gonna be taking on the projects and certification process. If you do have any questions and you'd like to put them in the chat in the meantime, please feel free to do it. You don't have to wait until the end. So it's uh, it's something that I can keep an eye on. I know Andreas keeping an eye on the chat, but I just wanna make sure that uh, feel free to ask any questions that you might have. So right now we do, uh, after you take the 120A, you get the theory, you go for the 120B, you get more of the practice, and then you take the 120C, that's the exam prep. Okay, right now what we're doing is we're delivering it in person and we're delivering it in online. So this course, it's for those who are going to be taking on the International Passive House Certification Exam, okay? A lot of people come to me and ask, Luis, do I need to take the 120 120B to take the 120C and the exam? No, you don't. It depends on uh, how much you know about Passive House, but one can know a lot about it and just take the 120C just for a matter of fact for them to understand a little bit how the exam works and uh, to be a little bit, let's say, to increase the successful rate. Right now, Passive House Canada, we have a 90% of success rate for those who take the whole, the, the whole pathway to certification. So for the exam, the exam right now, this exam, as I mentioned, it's uh, based on the Passive House Institute uh, standard, international one. So we are pretty much delivering uh, the exam that Germany puts on together and we deliver through them, okay? So how does it work? This one right now, it's only live online. So all the exams now are done online. How long does it take? This exam is three and a half hours where you have 32 questions included plus a design test, not plus, sorry, the 
The design test is included in the 32 questions and uh, you're required to pass with 50%. Going back to the micro-credentials that we delivered here in Victoria with uh, Camosun College, not all the students went all the way to take the exam. Some of them did and uh, they passed the exam. Some of them only um, finished the three courses and then they received the micro-credentials, but we do have an exam that we sent to the students. They need to get the attendance and they need to pass on the exam as well so they can get the micro-credential. The second micro-credential that now we're putting forward here in Victoria's as well, it's uh, the High Performance Passive House Tradesperson Micro-Credential. This one is going to be for those who are gonna be building the passive houses, okay? Or any high performance building, don't get me wrong. When I keep saying uh, passive house, imagine it's a net zero ready, imagine the high performance building because even though you're not gonna go through the whole process of certifying a building, ideally you can always make the buildings better with a few technicalities that uh, you can put into account. So how does this uh, pathway to certification works? Right now, we're back to in-person with the trades course. Unfortunately, during, the, during COVID, the hands-on portion was a little bit compromised, but we found a way to go through sending to all of our students a box with uh, materials so they could actually work on, and we will do a small presentation online. But now we're back in person, so which is finally great because in my perspective, the trades course would, uh, it, it works better um, in person. So what you go through is you go through three courses that I mentioned. The first one is Passive House Construction Training Course for Trades, theoretical. The second one is Passive House Training Courses for Trades, practical. And the step three is the exam prep for those who are uh, looking for certification. And the last one would be taking the international exam. Uh, for this one, for this pathway to certification, Passive House Canada now has a 100% uh, uh, passing rate on the international exam. So this is where the trades uh, journey begins. So what happens is we have the theoretical and the practical courses combined during the same three days. So what we do is we have three full days of classes where in the morning, the trades, they would go to the theory. In the afternoon, they just go to, uh, um, let's say, hands-on, and so on for the three days. So this one's, um, we're now, as I mentioned, we're back to in-person, so this is amazing. And uh, what they're going to learn is they're going to learn about the uh, Passive House criteria and principles, uh, building uh, ecology, comfort, and economic, economic efficiency. We do introduction to the, uh, to the design tools, to the PHPP, but they, they don't go into the deep details. We talk about insulation, thermal bridge free construction, air tightness, windows, ventilations, and building envelope. So this is really important because this is one of the things that we see most of the projects going to high performance and they fail in the end due to the fact that they only train their designers, but those ones who are actually making the building, let's say, uh, let's say building the building, like the final product, they forgot to train. So that's where the problem comes up. So the second part, which is, uh, happens with the theoretical, as I mentioned before, in the afternoons, what they do is they do a few exercises. The first exercise they do is we do a door blower test. So they understand how to prepare the building for you know, testing air tightness, how to set up the building for the air tightness test and looking for leakages and identify possible problems. The second day, what they do is they do it a windows installation which is normally the weakest point when it comes to the building envelope. And we also do um, insulation stuffing, membranes, and taping work. And the last day, the third day, they come after and we look at ventilation systems. So how do you set up all this? You need a facility um, where you can set up a few mock-ups. Normally, uh, we do have a ventilation system and uh, the windows we can find out uh, throughout our partners. So Passive House Canada will, uh, uh, let's say, will assist you to get everything ready for, you know, the theoretical and the hands-on portion. And then we go back again to the, uh, let's say, uh, exam prep. Nowadays, we're just doing this one, let's say, live online. It doesn't make a lot of sense to sit them for another four hours. 
as the course it's really uh, let's say um they get a lot of information the 150c for the trades the example for the trades we only focus on exercises Luis, can we do this in person yes we for sure can but to be quite honest it does work very well to have this online um too once you finish what you do is um right now you do an exam which is three hours long and uh, it's, uh, it's uh, let's say, it's divided in three segments. All the segments, they need to achieve 50%. So they have 18 questions for the Passive House Basics. So they have 15 questions for Building Envelope Specialization. And they have 13 questions for Building Services Specializations. What means is they need 50% on each. But Louise, let me say if I pass on the Building Services, but I fail on the Building Envelope, you still get your certificate but you just don't get the specialization on building at all. And uh, now to talk about partnerships. Um, I like to say that at Passive House Canada, I, I don't know who said that I was actually looking into this. I repeat myself a lot with this sentence, which is if you wanna go fast, go alone. If you wanna go far, go together. And to be quite honest at Passive House Canada, we always looking for partners and solid partnerships across Canada due to the fact that we believe that the more people who can um, provide our courses the best it is not only for not only for let's say for the buildings but also for the planet and this is uh, I guess this is the reason why we're all in here today uh, trying to find ways where we can cooperate and work together so the partnerships I would just give you a, a, a brief um, information on how it, it's done so the partnership that we're looking for that and actually we're proposing is port deliveries what we do is normally we do three deliveries together. And then after this, we just want you to take it on and do independently. So the first delivery, Passive House Canada will support you with instructors. So we have our instructors because for you to deliver the, those courses, we believe that the instructors, they need to be certified internationally. So it makes sense for them to be talking about the international standard. So the second delivery, what we do is we do the train the trainer. So we have one of our instructors and one of your instructors in class together. They co-teach. And then for the third delivery on, your institution would be uh, um, you know, independent to keep it going. We just need to work on how we would, uh, let's say, on the uh, contract side of things, because the only thing is Passive House will only come in and edit, uh, audit once a year. But because we're going to keep the content always updated, and that's what we do. Once a year, we have our content updated. Uh, I put it there as well, profit sharing, because I believe that every par partnership has to be good for both institute for all the institutions. So the model that we have will pretty much depend on the, uh, the interest that you have on how you want to deliver. You want to do it just one time, two times, or you want it to be independent at, in the future. But again, uh, the way that Passive House Canada works, we're, we're always trying to partner because at the end of the day, the more people we train, the last this is gonna be a question of how much it costs, but it's just uh, how, how can we do it better? And at the end of the day, we're always trying to improve. So um, right now I finished my presentation and I just uh, open up the floor for questions. I think I did okay. I have 16 minutes here on my watch. So please, if you have any questions, just uh, let me know. And um, here's also some more information. If you wanna go through it, uh, visit our website. And I also sent the presentation. I hope I believe that right now you already have the presentation on the chat for you to download. And uh, I'm happy to take any questions if there's any. Thank you. Thank you, Louise. Uh, it was interesting to learn more about these different pathways. Um, and it's great to see the certifications internationally recognized. Uh, I'm gonna turn to some questions from the audience that I have here. I'll read them to you out loud. Uh, so the first question is, how are Passive House and Camison College training instructors to teach this innovative programming? How is this cost and energy shared? Okay, great question. Um, so let me just get it here. Okay, so what we did was uh, we started the first delivery, as I mentioned, we got our instructors to teach. So Camosun's College now is, uh, we had their instructors in class they attended the exam, and now the second delivery is going to be done, let's say, together with Passive House Canada instructors in Camosun, and after that, they're going to be uh, able to just move on and keep delivering as the speed they want. 
Because at the end of the day, as Passive House Canada has their own, uh, we have our own schedule. Uh, ideally, Camosa would be able to deliver whenever the, it, it suits to them. And we also would like to have this, let's say, in a way implemented in their courses, in their curriculum courses. Of course, it's not the whole program unless we find a solution. Say, Luis, I want to bring this to the whole program. We can find a way. But um, if I did not answer correctly your questions, please let me know. And I, so the second part is how is the cost and the energy shared? Okay, so what we do is as we do a profit sharing, we put all the costs internally as well. We calculate everything. And then we come up to, at the end of the day, we do the math that we do it. So I can, if you have any more questions, we can take this offline and I can explain it to you a little bit better, the numbers. But uh, we always try to find a solution that is going to be good for both institutions. As we did with Camosun, as we did it online, so we didn't have any cost for energy and uh, anything like that. So it was done online. Thanks. Uh, our next question is, how did partnering with a post-secondary institution benefit recruitment and Passive House's mission? Okay, so we believe that uh, Passive House has to be, let's say Passive House has to be not something that you need to go through the needy greedy. We believe that Passive House has to be something that people already understand ever since they start their life. Uh, we should not be talking about better buildings as something that uh, only people who has more money would would know. So ideally, we do also a lot of um, work towards, um, we used to do it more before pandemic, let's say with kids, uh, with teenagers, because at the end of the day, if you understand the requirements, we're going to be improving the step codes across Canada even more because people are not going to be say there are not going to be only uh, requests for the best, um, let's say, finishing inside of the house. They're going to be requesting for better windows, for better, you know, comfort. So that's the idea we think we see this. The more people know, the more common it gets, the easiest it is to get it done. Thank you. The next question I have here is from Robert Luke regarding partnerships. Do you have any post-secondary education providers? Uh, apologies if I missed this. No, Robert, we don't. We actually don't have it yet. Uh, what we've been doing is we've been partnering right now with a couple of institutions um, in Alberta. Uh, and we're delivering the trades course there as well in partnership. So uh, I could mention this because the first one is ready. Uh, it's been it's on our website. So we're partnering with SAIT. It's an institution called Southern Alberta Institute of Technology. So we do have this as well as, as ongoing, but it's not as a micro credential, but it's more of a Passive House Canada course. So we do have this already on the works, yes. The next question I have here is, how was programming accredited at Camosun to ensure that learners were prepared to write the exam? Okay, good question. So what happens is, we like to say that uh, we do teach uh, adults for now. Of course, we want to go to kids in, in, as well. So as we have the same process as we did it with Passive House Canada's program, we did it with then Camosin, they went through the whole program. So at the end of the day, it's more of, um, if you attend the classes and if you study and if you get the uh, exam prep done, you have a 90%, um, let's say, passing rate. At the end of the day, I believe it's something that uh, you would need to study. It's not an easy exam. I'm not going to lie to you. It's not an easy exam. It's an open book source exam. But I do believe we've tackled harder exams before. It's only a matter of how much you want to pass. I'm like I myself, I'm a civil engineer, as I mentioned before. I come from Brazil. I did all my training in Germany. And back in Brazil, construction is not something that we talk about air tightness, thermal bridge, and anything. So I had to study perhaps more than the Germans that I was taking class on it, but it's not impossible. I mean, like it, it depends on as how much you want, but uh, to be quite honest, if you take the courses and if you start hard, I can definitely provide you some more information on that, but I'm, I'm pretty sure you're gonna pass if you really study for it. 
Perfect. The next question I have is from Robert Luke again. Uh, I'm interested to know more about the process and the pros and cons to getting international certification. Uh, okay. Thank you, Andrea, for this one. Uh, Robert, thank you for your question. So I like to say that uh, the international certification, it gives you the quality assurance that you are certified towards the standard. Okay, so that's the international certification. So it's it's pretty much like any kind of certification. What it gives you, it gives you the quality assurance that you've done throughout the whole process. You've done the process. And your, your certificate would be valid anywhere in the world where you're going to be building to the passive house standard. Again, I, I, I refer to myself because now I'm living in Canada, but I come from Brazil and I have my certificate, international certificate, which now I can work here in Canada pretty well with any kind of passive house a design and consultant if I wish to work with. I now work with Passive House Canada, but my certificate will give me this uh, quality assurance internationally. So I don't see any cons. I only see pros to be quite honest. The only con would be you need to spend more time studying to pass the exam. That's the only con. So time-wise, I know we only have 24 hours a day, but I'll, that's one con that I can, I can present it to you. That was a great way to answer that question. Um, Thank you, <laughs> the last question I have here uh, is what are the benefits and challenges of using micro credentials to teach innovative programming? Great question. So uh, I like to say that the benefits, uh, first, first of them, and far most, I think the most important is you're actually ahead of the curve and you're actually pushing for something that uh, I believe it's going to become in the near future the normal. The longer you wait, you can wait, but you're always going to be, you're only going to fall behind to what's happening. Just look at the stat codes across Canada. Just look at the numbers that we have. Just look what we've, we've signed for the Paris Agreement. Just look what we're trying to do. So here in Canada, even though I was, I, I actually read a, an article that Canada is only responsible for 2.33% of the GHA, GHA emissions in the globe. And one a person said, oh, we only have 2.2 or 3%. But Think about it. Canada is among the seven, uh, let's say, richest um, um, countries in the globe. So if Canada cannot do it, who else will be doing it? I mean, like my reality, I see something different because I come from a different country. And so the benefits I see here, not to digress from the, the question, is that uh, you're going to be, first of all, you're going to be improving um, people's knowledge to what's to come and to what is the, what are the best practices when it comes to design and construction. Number one, so you're giving more to your students. Number two, you're actually helping the planet, which I, I believe that would be zero, zero, one behind. So that's one of the things. Challenges, yes, you're going to have a lot of them. But uh, every single one who's a starter, who's a pioneer, pioneer, always has challenges. But right now, what we have in this community is we do have a very united community, and we're here to support each other. When it comes to the challenges, I believe Passive, Passive House Canada has you know, has gone through quite a bit. So we learn a lot, so we can help. So challenges right now are, are just, let's say, the biggest challenge is let's put the bureaucracy down and get the work done and, you know, start doing the work because at the end of the day, that's all we have to do. Right now we have chain supply, material, knowledge, course. You have everything. Right now it's more of a, Let's push, you know? So that's the only challenge as I see. It's like, if you are a pioneer, you're gonna take the first hits, but believe me, most of the hits we already went through here and there. Thank you again, I hope Louis. I answered the questions. No, thank you, Andrea. I hope I, had, I, I did not lose any of the questions or kind of missed something here in the between. Those are the few questions I saw on my end, and I see it. we're actually uh, having impeccable timing. It's 5.09. Um, so before we, we do uh, end this session, I just wanted to thank everyone for joining. And thank you so much for your time, Louise, and, and giving me your presentation and answering all those questions. Um, before we do leave, I would just like to uh, hand over the floor to Emma for some closing remarks. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you. Thanks, Andrea, and thanks, Louise. Um, what a day. Uh, I wanted to take this chance to thank all of our wonderful speakers this afternoon. We certainly learned a lot from you, and I think that we are all uh, equipped with more than a few takeaways. Um, 
So thank you very much. I hope that this afternoon has left our audience inspired to explore micro-credentials in practice. Um, and it isn't over yet. So join us tomorrow morning, beginning at 9 a.m. for the next half of the forum. Our keynote speaker tomorrow morning is Mark Brown, who is the Chair of Digital Learning and Director at Dublin City University. And then we're gonna keep it local uh, with some examples of micro-credentials in practice uh, here in Ontario at Humber College and Ontario Tech University, and much more on the agenda for today. So have a great night, everyone, and we'll see you then.